Well, can you believe that it is possible? Yes, it is possible to detect what browser extensions you may have installed when you visit a website. They can fingerprint you. That means they can figure out what extensions you may be using. That may give some information to someone wanting to dox you or to send you ads. If they know what extensions you have, they, that may be one more piece of information they can use to spam you or to survey what you're doing, determine who you are, where you're coming from. The fingerprinting, that's just one part of identifying you, mostly for innocent things like targeting ads towards you, uh, that maybe you may be happy with. But they're doing it without you having done anything except uh, visit a website that has JavaScript sent to your browser, which then uh, can detect based on how the extension works. This is presented in a paper at the Proceedings of the 30th USENIX Symposium in 2021. Okay, so let's think, how in the world could they do this? Well, they use CSS, that's Cascading Style Sheets. It's the control uh, commands as part of web, web pages that separate out how exactly the text is shown on a page. For example, this text here, the style is a darker gray. This is a dark black style. A CSS file uh, sets up the styles of the pieces of text on your web page, and they're identified by the uh, markings around the text telling what kind of item it is, and we'll take a look at some examples. So what the, what the uh, extensions can do, they actually figure out what style changes have been implemented by your extensions, is usually how what many extensions do. They change the style of your web page when they're installed. And the key thing to being able to fing fingerprint you with that because of that is that any JavaScript code that's running in your browser, which comes from many, many other websites that are linked to one web page, any JavaScript code can detect style changes that may have been caused by other pieces of code. So by figuring out what special uh, style changes are applied by one particular extension, as long as it's unique to that extension, I can say, oh, you must have that extension installed because no other extensions changes the style of that particular element on my web page. So that is the basic vulnerability, and it's called the, the ability to see into the document object model, DOM, document object model. And it's done uh, because, again, the extensions make style changes. They, that's called injecting rules into the cascading style sheet. Now, injecting rules isn't a bad thing like SQL injection, sounds like. But injecting rules becomes visible, those changes in your style become visible to other JavaScript code running, which would be my or their extension detector code. Now, the basis of how to find what style changes have happened on the page is done through one particular function that they identify in this paper. It's called the Get Computed Style Application Programming Interface API. That particular function allows any JavaScript code to find out what style changes have happened on this page. So that is the key to letting some extension detector see what style changes have happened. Now they're going to explain it a little bit with a little diagram here. Let's take a look at this little diagram. Okay, we have a web page that we go to, 
it has a document object model that just think of that as that's all the little pieces of the web page that I can refer to. I can refer to the header. I can refer to paragraph named paragraph one. I can refer to a a span or a table with a particular name in it. I can refer to all the tables and in the document object model, I can also refer or read the styles. So you have an extension installed on your on your browser. You go to a web page. That extent that extension, because it's there, it when you add that extension, it gives basically gives permission to the extension to go ahead and make some changes to the style. So my web page looks nice. I hide ads. I make particular links show up like a phone number automatically shows up as a dialable phone number that is done by my convenient extension well when i visit a site that has scripts that are able to see what style changes have happened i then can through the special checking of what styles got changed i can detect what extension is making those style changes and that's again the how this all works so in their study they found out now how they found out is very interesting as well they studied 17,000 extensions and of those 17,000 they determined that 15% of them make some style change through the CSS cascading style sheets file uh, or, or protocol and some of them regardless of what domain they're on will inject that extension so 6,000 of them do it regardless of what domain you're visiting some may only work if you visit like the there's a particular extension I found that if you would visit a Wikipedia site it will reformat and make the Wikipedia pages look better and I'm not sure why I care but that that extension only works if you visit Wikipedia. Other extensions, no matter where you visit, they check your page and mail will make some style changes. Out of those, out of their initial set of 116,000 that they checked, 4,000 of them, three about almost 4%, made specific changes in the CSS that was uniquely identifiable, meaning they could tell what extension was installed because of the unique style changes that they made. Now, that's only 3.8% of 116,000, not a big deal, you think. Well, the deal is maybe one of those extensions can find out something that you don't want them finding out. And we don't know which, they, I don't think they gave the, the exhaustive list of what extensions there were. But how they did it is also an interesting thing. So that's what we're gonna be taking a look at as well. Okay, again, the explanation of how that extension, uh, when you install an extension, you are basically giving that extension permission to watch pages that you visit. So an extension is a pretty powerful thing. It is basically sitting there on the side watching you visit web pages. Now they're supposed to be doing good things for you like blocking ads that appear on the web page. But remember the extension has permission to run scripts besides the scripts that you load when you visit a web page. And so all those rules that you give permission to the extension when you do the installation, they allow uh, the extension to work and make your page look good or block those ads. So they visit with their scripts. They, they, they install each extension one at a time and they uh, detect the style changes by creating what they call these tripwire elements. Elements like a, like a phone number uh, div that displays a phone number, they would uh, catch that change in the style based on an extension that highlights little phone num any phone number it finds on the page. So it, pur it purposely puts in elements that they know extensions are watching for, and then they see what style changes are made 
that could be detected by that extension detector script that watches for style changes. Now they did this uh, through uh, Python code, but here's an example of a, an element that we're going to call the element of class trigger. Now that's just a fictitious element, but any type of element on your web page looks like this. This is the HTML of your web page. And because it has a class trigger, a particular extension that would watch for trigger and change a style to it, uh, or with a style that's called WW hover card, this element will get changed by an extension. If it does get changed, that element can be seen. The JavaScript can check for, hey, what happened to the style of my div named WW hover card? Your JavaScript through that special function can see that change and now know that, oh, I've detected an extension having changed the style. Now, if a particular extension was the only one that ever watched for WW hover card and made a change to the image, then you would know that that extension has made the change. So here would be the effect of viewing the page. When the extension were there, that element trigger would not have its style change with an image showing up. See that that image has a new it would have an image uh, applied to it. And when the extension is there, that would show up. So that would be the effect of, of the style change. You'd see that visual effect, but they don't watch for that. They actually wrote a script that would load after getting a list regular once a day, getting a list of the extensions would watch and do the test one at a time. So remember what extensions can do. Any extension is detectable if it changes the page style in a unique way. I mentioned the ad blocker, password managers, anything that may do some privacy protection. Some work on only one domain. Some don't, don't care what domain you're on. They check no, every page no matter where you visit. So we're detecting that style change. Now, how they did it. They regularly downloaded them using a web crawling strip. They wrote it in Python, basically a list of websites out there, and one at a time visited the, the sites, uh, downloaded the extensions, stored them in a database, and somehow, through an automated script, downloading all the extensions they found each day, they would start up a browser, install the extension in that browser, and watch for style changes made by that extension. Any style change that it made, they would fingerprint that or you know, uh, note that and save that to a database. They would capture that particular call to a extension chain or a style change, watching for the call to tabs.insert CSS. They could see what CSS was being attempted to be changed by every one of those uh, extensions installed through a automated script. Then, knowing what all the extension style changes were made, they made a pay a web page with all those styles that they had ever found on that web page, and then would visit the page and just to see what new, what triggers were unique to a particular uh, extension. So the lesson here is extensions can make it a little easier for people to identify where you've been, what extensions you have installed, so they know what kind of extensions you like, and uh, they can uh, add extension. Well, they can uh, change your uh, your watch watch you. So. One lesson is, well, just don't install extensions. That might be a little inconvenient. So just be careful. Just like any game you install on your computer, there's a chance that it has some malware in it. Same thing goes for extensions. They could get the JavaScript world to disable that specific function that made it able to fingerprint extensions by disabling the Get Computed Style API. 
for all JavaScript code. Good luck trying to get everyone writing JavaScript to make that change. It's been around for so long that people use it for legit reasons. Another promising thing sounds for you know a, a marketing money-making thing is if you know if people are worried about that, you get them all uptight about it, get them a very and then sell them a style detection blocker. You can actually have an extension that watches for extensions and ignore the attempts for style changes or ignore the attempts to detect style changes by those uh, extension detecting scripts. And another, uh, I think the most promising thing is a, a way of writing code so that when web pages make changes to scripts, uh, it uh, defeats the capability to see the actual style changes because you have a think of it as a hidden style base uh, hidden in the in the web page to not allow people to detect style changes made by extensions now again it was only three percent of extensions that they found there are more uh, I'd say more more successful ways of detecting and fingerprinting you but this was kind of a unique way uh, that was interesting as I studied that paper given to us. Just for references here, here is the particular paper itself. They have a video demonstrating uh, detecting an extension. Here are the authors of that paper. I found this pretty kind of interesting. It helped me learn a little bit more about what could be done with CSS and JavaScript and unique ways of people finding uh, Anytime there's code running on a page, there's ways for people to uh, exploit it some way or another. So you always have to be on the guard, on guard for no matter how innocent the code looks like, like, oh, I'm just changing styles on a page. What could be wrong with that? Someone could know what program is running and that might help them track down somebody or capture their activity uh, target ads toward them. Anything that fingerprints you, of course, you will, will affect somewhere along the line of what they can know about you. And just be aware of that and watch out for those extensions. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.